Together for more than four, four years. Hi, uh, my name is Junaidi. And I'm Sherry. <laughs> and we're both married couple. And we've been together for. Uh, let's do this, guys. Eleven years. Yes. Okay. My name is Bobby Avasti, I'm... and she is. Oh, Madam Lim. We have been nearly forty-eight years together. Question number one: How did you both meet? What were your first impression of each other? Uh, I mean, we swiped on each other um, through OKC, which is a dating app. We decided to plan a date. And so when I showed up, she, she brought her best friend. Did I handle it well or did I...? Yeah, you did, you did. I got a green flag immediately after that. Like, oh. my friend told me you were a green flag, so... We met in the town market street. There was a restaurant. She was a student and doing a working part-time as a cashier. Being a seafarer, I was not always in Singapore. My ship sailed out. So I look forward to come back to Singapore and see you again. You know? No, first time he gave me a tip 50 cent. <laughs> say, my, my value is not 50 cent. They turn back. <laughs> he added me as a Facebook friend, apparently for a while, but I, I've never seen his friend request apparently she's, she's too popular. no 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 yeah. <laughs> i wasn't expecting you to be very very gentleman like because i met you during your like you just got into ns you were like a little boy and i was a little girl but then you were you are acting like a man so i was like okay uh she is that popular girl in block g okay i was in block f i did music and she did um theater i was like hey, this girl not bad lah <laughs> Very pretty, yeah. Uh. And then I was like, hey, hey, Sherry, um, hi, uh, I'm Junaidi. So I said, okay, can I take a photo of you? I was like praying so damn hard for her to say yes. And yeah, eventually she said yes. And I said, okay, let's take a photo of her. So that, it's a very special moment for me because it was the first photo ever taken with that camera. And we still have the camera, right? Yes, we still have the camera. <laughs> How did your friends and families initially react to your relationship wow, and how out. has their acceptance or attitudes evolved over time? Wow. Shook. This one shook. My family all lived in India, so they don't didn't even know about it. So now it's up to what was your friend said. And my parents, you know, since the very beginning, they knew like my taste and what I usually go for and stuff like that. So they're pretty okay with it. So my family is a very whoever you want to date or marry is your choice because you're spending a life with them. So my family believes that they don't really have a say on regarding like the race or whatnot. Maybe just like on they'll just advise on the character or whatnot lah. First uh, mix my in my family. But after it's my choice. Then meet really maybe okay lah, just start testing. <laughs> okay, everything fine. Then we continue. Yeah. Some question mark like this, but I don't care. That is my choice. I had an ex-girlfriend and she was Indian as well. When I first introduced her to my mom, it was... No shock already. Yeah, no, no. I, w I wouldn't say there was a shock at first as well. <laughs> but it's just natural. Lor. When we first dated, I had to hide our relationship from my parents, of course. You know, you, you know when you first start dating, you don't know if it's going to be serious yet. Mm. But then, one night, suddenly, my parents barged in and then the first thing they said was, you better break up with him. They're like, huh? What are you talking about? Break up with who? <laughs> huh? I mean, in a nutshell, uh, the whole conversation is about them wanting us to break up. Yeah, that was the sad part, unfortunately. Yeah, so it really took a long, 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 long time. Long, long time. Right? Super long. But they love him now. Yeah. That's what's important. See, those of you who are struggling <laughs> like me, persevere on, okay? Relax. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share a significant cultural tradition from each of your backgrounds that you have integrated into your relationship or family life? Growing up in a Malay household, so many things are very spicy, very punchy, you know, some padas. But when her parents cook, okay, I'm not complaining, very soupy. 
Yeah. Soup here, soup there. Right? I had to dig, like, ask questions and stuff like that. Hey, why are so bland? Why so, you know, not punchy? <laughs> so everything is bland in that sense for health. Not because they can't cook, it's because it's for the health. I learned few Indian Aru Gobi, I can cook. <laughs> The beauty is my Indian restaurant in Beijing was run by her and all the ambassadors and everybody knew her and she's the one who was running the Indian restaurant there. Because of him, I have yeah. started to love spicy food. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's one thing I can't live without now. Like, I cannot live without sambal. Like, we're always on the yeah. search for the best sambal and all she that. She used to like, oh, yeah. spicy chili, but you don't want to do spicy <laughs> But now, wow, sambal doesn't have. Chili padi have wow power da. But the, okay. so the only <laughs> so the only bland food I can eat now is really my mom's cooking. Yeah. Like for him, right? He already started off eating with hand. Like his father teach mm. him to eat with hand. Like prata always mm. eat with hand one. So it wasn't like different for him. Yeah. Oh my god, eating with hand is so much. Like it makes the food so much better. Of course, when I'm with my family, we don't usually do that. But I, yeah, when I, I eat with chopsticks. So. Yeah, yeah. When you actually. Can I say something? I my chopstick skills is better than him, okay? I can pick up marbles with my chopsticks. He can't. <laughs> so it is like a common interest, like a festival. And it is enjoyed by everybody. When children were young, they enjoyed it more. They bring a firecrackers and we bring the put the lights and we whether it was a Chinese New Year Ampao and everything. So all was a part of the society and part of the family. Have there been instances where you have had to confront or educate others on misconceptions about your respective cultures or mixed race relationships? Not really. We had to educate any people. Those who are educated, they understand as it is. Those who are uneducated, totally down the drain, there's no point educating them because they will never understand. They have a pre-set their minds and they will flow along with that thinking and believe in in their own. So no point in educating them. But most of the people in Singapore are open-minded. When we first started this whole um, posting on social media, it's not very nice to read um, these kind of comments every single day, especially when they are in the thousands or in the, you know. So uh, definitely it affected her quite a bit at the start uh, because most of them are directed to her. I think there was a period of time that it really affected my self-esteem and question and doubt my relationship and also whether I want to continue content creation online. Keyboard warriors will always be keyboard warriors. They just want attention. Yeah. Somebody asked me if um, Malay people pray to pigs. Sorry, uh, can I ask? Uh, you see, uh, Malay people don't eat pork because they pray to pigs. And I was like, what? Why? <laughs> because... Hindu people don't eat cows because they pray to cows. So that's what he said. So I was like, oh, okay. okay. But no, in uh, Islam, they believe that because pigs are dirty, generally they don't eat pork. Yeah, so he's like, oh, yeah, okay. And then he proceeded to eat the pork in front of me and say, <laughs> wow, but it's so good. <laughs> Reflecting on your journey as a mixed race couple, what advice would you give to new couples embarking on a similar path in today's Singaporean society? Everybody has their own freedom, what you want to do, is your, your choice. And if somebody interferes, it is like uh, obstructing the traffic on the highway. You must report it. You know? I think casual racism okay. is like very hard to slowly move. It's, it's hard to move past because mm. everybody is so used to it. But I think we should slowly move away from it. It's not nice mm. towards mm. anyone that is getting that remarks. La. You know, I've, I've made these kind of remarks. I have laughed at these kind of remarks. But when actually, when I get get together in a, in a mixed race relationship and she actually tells me that, hey, actually it's not very nice. Then you know that, hey, awakening. Yeah, because like, to you, it might not be something that, that you mean harm. Mm. Like you just think that it's funny because mm. everyone thinks it's funny. Mm. But to the person that's getting the remark, it might mean harm actually. Mm. Yes. Like not everything can be passed off as a joke. Yeah. Love is love. Mm. See the person's like character. Okay, if you date somebody that your parents like, it will never work out. Because that's why I tried. Because I tried to make my parents happy, right? I feel like in the end, uh, chemistry and character matters a lot. And I feel like race doesn't even matter lah. 
you know? Yeah. It doesn't even matter if you're black and white. Why do you spoil the moment? Why do you spoil the moment? Why do you spoil the moment? You could be, you could be. Beyonce is black and white, right? Black or white, yeah. Pertemptas. 